Good morning, everybody, and welcome to One on One Live. I am Mark Jeffries in studio, and we are about to kick off our first One on One Live of 2019 between Jordan Lee and Gerald Swindle. Should be a great three hours of action. Coming to you from Lake Gunnersville, and I can't think of two better guys that we could have kicking off our one-on-one -on -one live. All right, I'm going to queue up a video, going to show you guys where they're going to be fishing on Lake Gunnersville, kind of give you an idea. They're going to have two 90-minute periods, all right? Everything over one pound counts. It's going to be total weight during those two 90-minute periods, so let me cue up the video and show you where they're going to be fishing today. All right, they're going to fish an area very, very familiar with everybody. The center of Lake Gunnersville, right there in the Spring Creek area. And they're still going to be able to fish some main lake stuff if they want to. One side of the bridge is going to be in play, but they're going to have the entire Spring Creek area and I'm sure if you've been to Lake Gunnersville, you have probably fished this area of Lake Gunnersville. We're toward the end of March. I fully expect that these guys are going to rock in this area. Uh, we have great cell service in this area, and I think that we are gonna be entertained for a good amount of time for 90 minutes with two of the prolific anglers that live on Lake Gunnersville, so we're gonna see how this thing plays out. But right there, Spring Creek, and then as you see, they're gonna be able to fish some of the main lake area just outside of Spring Creek. So 90 minutes of entertainment for you folks. I think it's that time. We are gonna get the shots queued up, and I think we are ready to go to, uh, we're gonna kick things off with the G-Man, Gerald Swindle. All right, I'm going to count it down, guys. Three, two, one, fish. Let's go to the G-Man. We live now. Bass zone, are we live? We about to get it on. Joe Lee versus G. Lake Gunners with three hours. Throw down, show down, hold down. We about to get this thing started. Just tell me when I can throw. Yes. Man, now it's on, Joe Lee. Now it's on. Whew. Classic champ. Taking him on right here at Gunnersville. Here's the key. We got to stay inside of Spring Creek. We're not allowed to run all over. So we're going to be fishing limited waters. And it may not be the style I'd normally fish right now, but we're going to make it work. We're starting out on a little, old, little old channel swing on some racks. Little old morning rack bite. You know racks. I got Jerry the Crane down there monitoring the fish situation. Looks healthy. Looked like he might have been eating a little bit this morning. Work this DT6 up in here. Just cranking the racks, cranking the rocks. We count everything one pound. All it's got to do is weigh a pound and you can get on the board. So we're going to crank this little plug down through here. Just scooting and booting. Get in there past that bird, we're going to start jerking. Check him for some early morning activity on the rocks. All right, I like it, I like it. It's feeling good, feeling good. Little old flat play sticking out right there. Start out here on a little point right here in the mouth of Yacht Club. With some eel grass. I hadn't fished right here in years. But good looking little spot. Slinging a trap out here on it. So I put some big wagers, I mean this is big wagers on this, I'm getting, whoever wins today will get another angler's mine, or if, if Swindle beats me, which I'm not going to say that, if I beat Swindle, 
I'm going to get one of his rods. Signed. Rod of choice, too. So I can pick out whatever rod. If I can come out here and catch some meat. Signed of Gerald's, with the bait included. So this is an important day. I would go up there right near the classic trophies. I mean, it'd be a great, a great collector's item. Got bumped. That's a little, little downriver point right here. It's the mouth of the big spawning bay. Water's 54 degrees. I'm going to focus on these little points, you know, that are right in the mouth of this spawning creek. And uh, we got real slick conditions right now. I'm throwing a, a transparent looking bait, but fishing this little just obvious point that goes in this spawning pocket, and I'm going to kind of work my way in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fish out here for probably about 10, 15 minutes, and uh, just kind of mill around right out here. And then I'm going to kind of work my way in so I can't, you know, find where they're stopped before they, they head in. I want to yo-yo this trap. We're good now. I'm just really working out of the current. A little channel swing on the rocks. It's 53 degrees. I'd normally be cranking a lot of grass, and we're going to get to that. But I thought I'd check this little spot right here, see if we can get us some, a bite or two, kind of get the wheels turning. I'm jerking a little old jerk bait out here on 14-pound line. About six, seven foot deep where I'm jerking over. I've already had two swat at it, neither one of them got it. Cause we count anything as one pound and up, so I'm in a limit of two pound spots real quick. Twenty been a limit for me on them. I figured Joe went right to the yacht club because his, his mom and daddy used to have a boat in there. He knows that pretty good. It's a wise choice. He'd go in there and throw around that grass. He, Catch him an old big one or two. We're right in the channel swing, coming in right now. This part of Gunnersville don't offer the grass, the Spring Creek area. It's mostly rock. Spotted bass. Spotted bass. Oh, here we go. Alright. I seen a pile of them on that hummingbird right there.
All right, so we're going to weigh them up. Turn my powers on. Let me get that open. Zeroed out. That's all I had to do right there. I'm trying to take care of the fish. One five. One five eight. One five eight it is. So we're on the board against Joe Lee. I don't know what he's got yet, but he might have 20 pounds knowing him already. Turning it off. There's a gaggle of them down there in about 10 foot right there. Let me hit them with a, the Demon DT-10. Them look like spots. They were just sitting on a little high place right there and they're all about 10 foot deep there. It ain't how you start, it's how you finish, boys. That's, that's my, that's going to be the name of this three hour period. I mean, that's what I think about it. It ain't how you start, it's how you finish. But, he is on the board, so I'm going to have to answer with something. It always feels good to get that first bite. I don't care if you're in, you're out here fun fishing, you're in a derby, whether it's two pounds or ten pounds. Yeah, me, me and G have. We've, we've been out here more in the summertime, but it's been a little while. But, you know, we've been out here quite a bit. You know, he knows it really good. They caught one on was like his first cast. Close to it. He knows what he's doing, I'll tell you that. I probably caught my first bass ever on Gunnersville, right there at that marina. That's where I grew up. Like, my parents still have a boat in there. And uh, I actually caught my first fish ever. I was probably, I was probably 13 or 14. I remember coming out, there's a hump right over there that had hydrilla all over it. I remember catching my first fish ever flipping. I was, you know, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Still don't, but I remember flipping out there and my bait sinking and sinking and sinking and sinking. I'm like, God, it's only probably about six, seven foot deep right here and it sank. It sank for about 10 seconds, and I finally realized what had happened. I still remember that to this day, and it was just right out here. So, 
So I, I grew up fishing right, you know, right around here. Fishing off those docks, catching bluegill and whatever would bite. So this is a, this is a sentimental zone for me. Oh gosh, there he was, missed him. Just slapped at it. Just had for sure my first bite. Yo jerkin. Stay yo jerkin. Get on out of here too. We got a little old derby go going on. Spotted bass. Good God. If you've ever got an ex wife that's thinking about running away, you just get her ears pierced with some BMC hooks. She can't get away from you. God, son, he's on there. I'm telling you, man. You could put a BMC on a prisoner's foot and he couldn't run away from you. Oh. Oh. Is he rolled out? Clip my fish on. I just don't want to drop in the water. It wasn't nice to him. I ain't even gonna call it. I'm gonna let you call. One forty four. One forty four. Point forty four. One forty four. Off. Back to work. I run all around in here, man, looking.
I'm telling you boys, Jay's putting it on this morning. He is putting it on me. I'm hunting. I'm hunting them great old biggins. Good thing is, he's not dropping sevens on us. That's the only good thing. I'm on. I'm gonna bump this right over here. Not far. I'm fishing a little deeper grass right there. It's about eight, eight foot grass. But I'm gonna hit these little high percentage points. Anywhere these fish are gonna stop. That's what I'm gonna hit. See what happens. Push out right in front of these docks. I don't know what it's going to take. I mean, you know, I mean, you can hit a spot out here and catch, you know, a big, big bag. I mean, so I'm, that's what I'm going to look for. I mean, I'm not, I don't know what it'll take, though. I don't know what I'd feel comfortable with, really. I guess, you know, you don't really know. Water's, you know, it's got some decent stain. I mean, this fish should be fairly, fairly shallow. Gunnersville has been fishing really good too lately. I mean, just from what, you know, other guys have been bringing in. So, wouldn't be surprised if one of us found a little nest of them. May have to go to Chatterbait. I'm gonna mix up between a chatterbait and a trap.
Should be a big large mouth right here. Oh, you there, big baby? Come on. <laughs> Come on, big juicy. Flashing at us this morning. Always here. Yeah, this this bay we're in right here, I mean it I really literally grew up you well know, fishing off that dock right there over there. I mean that's where I literally started bass fishing. I mean, so this I, I fished all around this cove growing up and You know, I mean, it's just a, it's pretty cool just coming back in here because, you know, I don't, I don't fish over here a lot, but, you know, just to be fishing, be fishing a tournament in here is pretty cool. 
just started all around here bass fishing, so. I mean, I, I fished all these docks in here a thousand times. There used, I mean, now the only difference is there's, we got grass in here, we got a lot of eel grass in here nowadays, but, which is not a bad thing. But there used to be nothing in here. I mean, really, I mean, if you found a little sprig of grass here and there, it would be, you know, be doing something good. But I literally grew up fishing all around here. I know these guys. Great crappie fishing, too. There are some big ones in here, I guarantee you right now. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what my best day would be. Caught some big ones in here. For sure. This down this bank right here, it's got a real deep, it's a, it's a pretty deep bank right here and it kind of flattens out. I wanted to kind of fish down through here. A little, little point out here too. These fish will stop on. I've chunked many of Senkos down these banks. That's all I used to fish with, especially in the spring, man. That's what I threw was a worm. I mean, I didn't know any better. So catch. Mm. That feel big. Yeah, he is. He smoked it too, boys. That's a good one. That's a pretty solid one right there. Let's see if I can figure out and turn these scales on. Look how fat and beautiful that fish is. Zero. I'm going to try not to mess this up. I'm going to do it as legally as possible. I'm gonna make sure they zeroed. I'm gonna zero them again. Let me do it again. I'm not. A, I'm not an official. There you go. Zero. Call it. Four one four. Four one four. Four one four. All right. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. See, I don't even call those big ones. Those are just... He was shallow, real shallow. Well, he was real shallow, I and mean, he absolutely crushed it. I mean, about as hard as the fish. There's another one. Missed him. Little 
point right here comes out. Six four. I'm seeing with a light right here. Just seen a bunch of eelgrass come up on this flat. Yep, I seen them on the screen too. I didn't fish this little section yesterday. But this could get good right here. comes in at the end of this rip route where the flat comes up and I'm starting to see scattered eelgrass where there's not a lot of eelgrass in spring that's really on the juice but this is kind of interesting because it's way off the bank it's right here out of the current and I did see a few fish just sitting on top of it I'm gonna jerk over it and then I'm gonna turn around and get that red demon on them the DT6 if there's a big one in here he'll show himself on that demon quick But it's sitting out here just like it is. I mean, it's, we're sitting in five or six foot, and it's just right off the bottom. So that's what you're wanting. That is most definitely what you're wanting. I see it on my bait right there. It's just solid, bright green eelgrass. Which eelgrass is the key to the wintertime fishing up here. I mean, he sucker punched it. Now I floated out of it, so it means the grass is like right there. How about y'all now? How about y'all now? Get on. Get on up out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We in a little bad zone, smash down, kick down, blow out. I'm about to put that demon on, son. I'm about to turn loose old DT. Swindle's definitely getting some bites. I mean, there's no doubt. He's, but we're still looking for the, I'm really not so worried about, it's about like any tournament. You don't really worry about what everybody else is doing. I'm trying to figure out how to get trucked by one of them gunners will beggings. But he's getting he's getting bit. I mean, when you're getting bit out here, it's you know you you could be around some good ones. So I mean, he could pop off a four or five pounder. Yeah, we got real slick conditions right now. You know, sunny and. Uh, you know, these fish are going to be, I hadn't really got bit out yet. I ain't got bit out in like, you know, that six, eight foot. 
that, that one fish was probably about two or three foot. So it's real slick and sunny on this lake. You know, when we get these conditions, even though it was cold last night, during the day they'll they'll move up real shallow. But we got in here we got a lot of eelgrass around these docks. I'm just kind of, you know, fan casting around, but But it's real slick and sunny, but that fish, I mean, he really hit it hard. So, I mean, it, you know. He wanted the bait for sure. I got a frog and a big weight tied on. If I ever, if I, if I come across anything that's, that's matted up, especially with the sun baking on it. I mean, they'll, they'll definitely get around it. But we're gonna fish down this little section right here to try to fill it out a little bit. Yeah, it was, it was similar. Well, you know, we had the classic that one year we had the water that was coming up it had been so cold and then we had a real a jump in the water the water came up and it warmed up so when you get warm rising water those fish on this lake will get about as shallow as you can think but I know they're wanting to be up in the dirt and that's you know, that, that one fish told me that. They're just going to be probably scattered in here. It's not going to be like every cast or nothing. It's just where they're wanting to pull up and spawn. This little stretch right here will tell me. I'm gonna work right back through the top of this eelgrass, then we're gonna make a move on my point over on the river. But this has the potential to catch more than that one out of it, I can tell you that. I'm gonna try to hit this line right where it joins the rocks. Should be right in there.
I hadn't been catching that many on a chatterbait, but my gut instincts tell me to throw it right here because the water just a touch bit cleaner. Little swag in the bank right here. Little deep place right there. One of the good things about this lake is it's such a good lake when you're not getting bit, you know, sometimes you switch baits, but we always say it, when you're not getting bit on this lake, you're, you know, consistently, you're not around them because there's a gajillion bass in here. So always be courteous of that. that you know, you know, yeah, today we got slick conditions and stuff, but they're always biting. Somewhere, somehow. I like this right here, though, it starts to flatten out. And we'll I would think one would be right here. I'm about to burn up, I'll tell you that. I don't have enough time to take off my clothes though. I'm about down here where I'm going to quit. I come down that line of rip wrap. I was just checking. It's a good place to get some bites. I'm right here at the tail end of it where it runs back into that wall. Cranking the last bit of that grass there. I'm trying to rip that six out and then hold it. So 
but we're gonna. One cast was jerk bait and we're going to start business. Maybe two. All right. Well, most of the fishing I do this time of year is eelgrass, main river, gravel bars, stumps, current. Well, I don't have a lot of that here, but I do have one little section over there. So. I started on something I normally wouldn't be fishing this time of year, but I'm gonna go hit one or two key points. This guy, you'll see what I'm talking about when I get out there, that main river's got a little bit more color, and they still like that demon crankbait pretty good, so I'm gonna move to a little bit of eelgrass current pattern, try to catch a few good ones like that. This break wall should have one on it, sure as the world, because it's the deepest part right there. But, it didn't, so let's get ready one more. I can't do it. I got to go one more time. That eel grass and that rock joint right there, I thought it'd be good. Jordan Lee ain't got nothing on you, man. He's, hey, that joke will catch a big one, though. I got to go turn the heat. I got to go turn the heat up on him. I think I know just where we can do that at, too, so let's go. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Let's go to the juice. I don't know. I'm, I've never really known if, those fish, if the fish really... If the fish really care when boats are running right over them. I've always kind of wondered that out here because it happens all day, every day. Yeah, a bunch of, bunch of ill grass in the lake now. I mean, it's just pretty much everywhere. I'm trying a little, just a little staging spot. I hadn't got bit. I fish, you know, the only bite I've got has been real shallow. But it could have been, you know, could have been just kind of a fluke deal, but. It's just a little point in the spawning creek, kind of one of the last places these fish probably would stop.
Yeah. Yeah, I will. A little male. Yeah. I like when other people weigh them for me. This is... Just show me the zero and then you can Okay. Scale zero. Zero. One six four. One sixty five. One six four. Ah. I'm get... My head's gonna just roast. You don't want a burnt forehead when you bass fishing, boys. He was a little deeper, even though it was a small one. That's a good sign. I mean. Could be a couple fish. I'll make that same cast too. I always remember right where those, you know, right where you get bit when you're fishing grass. Always remember. Because there may be, maybe more of them in there. But Well, we just readjusted our boat position out here on the main river. I'm going to crank a little bit of this deeper grass with a six. This is kind of the area of the stuff I'd fish. It's not the juice, but I think you can get a bite or two out here. So I'm going to run it for a second. It's just a little inside bend. The point sticks out. And we'll start right around. Just tick the top up with that six. Just tick it. Hop it loose. Let it flutter. Do it again. need many bites on this. Get in the rhythm, slow it down real good. Real serious with it right here.
be right in there. Get on this down current side. Sometimes when you find them big ones right on the tip, one of these bars, there'll be a couple of them sitting there. You trigger one, repeat the cast. I caught that one, threw back in there, lost one, just got to the same, about the same spot and one bowed me up and just pulled off. They're just slapping. But you see, we don't have any wind either. We have zero wind right now. Slick. You know, I got, I know I got the, I got almost a see through colored trap. I, you know, I've, I've missed several, which the conditions are, you know, you need just a little wind. But, yeah, you know, that one, you know, that ate it, he, he hit it good. So it tells me there's a group of fish right there. If I can, you know, get them to bite or get them to eat the bait. But, you know, always pay attention, you know, right where, right where you get bit, especially on this lake. When you're fishing grass, I got good hooks on here. I'm gonna kind of just work around this little point where I think they're the fish are at, and you know may, may make another cast. There he was again. Don't want to eat. I had that full moon last night too. It's me against the fish. God, they're doing that. they're messing with me now. I mean these suckers, I mean that one just crossed my trap up. Kind of just work around this point right here.
And to me, this is where the fish really should be. They should be in a creek, you know, a good wad of them. We got a lot of current on the main river. This is a staging spot just in the creek. You know, it makes, makes perfect sense. I'm just gonna work in shallower on it now. I fished the outside of it. Now I'm just gonna, you know, that seven, eight foot, now I'm just gonna kinda slide in on it. Throwing that three, four, five foot. I know I missed a couple right there. Could have been just little ones. I think the trap is, I just don't think, I just don't like how they're, you know, these conditions for it. May need something a little bit more, you know, chatterbait is it's pretty natural. I'm just kind of working and see if I can find a little inside edge or something. It's really just like a carpet right out here. You know, I was working the outside. And it's like a carpet at eelgrass. Eight to four foot. You know, I need to find where there's, you know, some holes or some sort of little edge when you're fishing this stuff. Because there's nothing really to pinpoint them when you got just a, a straight carpet. I'm always looking at my side scan. You know, looking to see if there's any little turn or something in the grass. that's going to hold one. See right there, I see like two little, say two holes out to the left about 80 foot. So, I see a difference, you know, a change in the grass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow us down right here and throw right back in there where I saw that little change. Definitely got a little void in the grass right here. Well, that's what you want to find. You want to find where it's just kind of patchy. and nothing. 
I'll make a few casts with this for you. here to try to get on the main river with a little bit of current flow and a little bit dark you know more colored water to make that DT6 red color work I had a bite or two here the other day that had one flash at it out there but I'm gonna still stay a little patient with it. deal in this deal man you just don't have a lot of time to make adjustments you know you don't know whether you if you are to just sit on that one stretch of rocks just go back and forth and just peck him to death or get a hair and gamble on trying to catch a big and it's pretty pretty tough decision I'm gonna try to hit this with a chatterbait I ain't been getting that many bites on a chatterbait but maybe a little calmer today maybe what the wind has really blown the first day when I come out just fishing I still got a little red on that chatterbait trailer though. Enhance his mood. We got one more little point right there we're going to hit before it goes time out. So I'm going to. We're down in about 12 minutes, but tell me what we got. Feel like hydrilla when it, you can't clear it like that's hydrilla. That's the good stuff right out here at my feet. Yep, how good one. Piece of bait activity. There it is. No. Oh, God. Must have hit a stump right out there. Scared the monockers out of me because you don't normally hit nothing. Oh. about poop myself. Got this thick right there.
crisis. Gravy ought to choke it right there. supposed to come off and on the back cast, but it didn't, so I had to stop it. <laughs> Crap, what's that? Oh, that's that comorant. All right. Loon. Look at him. He got him a fish, too. How about that? He's showing up fishing, ain't he? Let's bump right here about a hundred yards. We're just going to jump it on past that right back down. I'm going to fish my last few minutes where I, I marked a bunch of there, I think, with spots. Just enough current. Should be it right there. Got some ill grass blown in right here. Right against this rip wrap. Anytime I see this, I'm like, you know, we got our sunny day. I figured, golly. Either had one slack me out there. And I probably won't get bit on it, but I'll I'll get it out of my head. I'm gonna drop on over drop on over in the thick. Real sunny out. Water may just be a little, well, it's never too shallow, but. Uh, it may be a little too shallow. Still look, still looks good. Those big ones will get under there. And just holds a little bit of heat.
it's worth a couple drops. Let's give us enough time to sling down this riprap right here. Bunch of turtles. I don't like it. I think I'm going to go back out to the main lake. Fish some eelgrass points out there. We got about five minutes left. I think I need to get out there some wind. I think it's just too slick in here. All right, let's get out of here. Let me get up some wind. We need to make magic. We're getting down to, gonna be in that second half, man, an hour and a half. You don't even really have no time to tie on. You can't make about one or two moves. I really wanted to catch them like this, but if they're not gonna bite like this, I'm gonna have to go back and fish full on just trying to catch some more, and I'm gonna have to go back and throw the jerk bait some more. But 
I know a couple of key bites crank, cranking on a DT6 and you'll be gold, but when you don't have much time to react, I, Swapped over to it. We got real slick conditions right now. I just want to go out here to the main lake at least where I may have a little current, current or wind. You know, that's what I'm gonna. I'm gonna fish a few of these little points. That the current's not hitting directly, but it's close. I need some movement. I don't like how it's just slick calm in here. They're just bumping, you know, I had several, three or four bump my bait. We'll see if it works. Take but a second though to catch a five just like this. Time for one more cast. I ain't got time to make another cast. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna take these rain pants off to make time. I got it. I've already got my mind on it. Winding down our first period. It's been pretty tough on both of us. I think we're still. I think we're still going to find them.
Just kidding. Recap. Oh, recap was, you know, I got a couple bites. I just didn't get, didn't get many and didn't really, wasn't feeling the area I was in. So I'm out, came out here closer to the main lake now, trying to, uh, trying to get at least around. The water's a little bit dirtier out here, but, you know, we got the currents close by, so I'm hoping that'll, you know, kind of offset these slick, slick conditions. We're going to fish some of these little high percentage points and stuff down through here. Second period. I got you. I got it now. Is it the mute, mute, mute was all mute was on. There's a little We're good now. Yeah. I think we're going to have to step our game up a little bit. Obviously, I only caught two, but, you know, I mean, you get two and they're big ones. You obviously, you got good weight, but with these conditions, you know, I don't know, really. I don't know exactly what it's going to take, but we're gonna have to, I'm going to I'm gonna have to do better than what we did the first period, which I think we can do. Just got to run into the right little deal. current lack of grass, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep chasing this grass bite. I'm going to make five casts on this point when we go back lines in, then I'm going back to rocks jerking. I'm going to, I'm going to hit my pitch. I'm going to go do the way I got bites, you know, it's dead calm, slick, no wind, not much current this morning, so. You got to factor in the conditions. I don't care if it is gunner's when it's like that. It can be tough, for, especially in this area. So that's what I think. And that's all that matters at Bass Zone right now on my boat is what I think. Jerk them rock. <whistles> Only way I've gotten bit. <whistles> Stay in the shade. I'm gonna run that section down there to feed mill. You can see the shade line by that big boat that's tied up. There'll be a shade line there, both corners this side of that bridge, right there off the marina, and that should be my time frame. Let's go, Jeffries. You played basketball. That's a triple under, double under. <laughs> Gotta go. Man, he's gonna fish that one point before we leave. Yep. We're gonna move. 
100 yards, we'll be moving, Jeffries. Let's go. I love you, Jolie! See him sitting out there isolated, just one more little spot to hit. At least we got just a little, a little bit of breeze right now. Just enough so to make the fish swallow the bait instead of just bump it. I think so. I think we're going to catch one over five. Well, one of us will for sure, I think. Yeah, he's just, we're both fishing these little eelgrass points and little turns and stuff. He's either throwing a DT6 or a, he's throwing a crankbait or a rattlebait, but that's two really, you know, staple baits out here, especially covering water this time of year. It's not really usually, it is what you're throwing, but, you know, a lot of it is where you're throwing it. I mean, there could be one, it's really a spot-oriented lake. So especially find a group, group, you know, the big ones grouped up. And that's what we're, we're hunting, grouped up fish. But we got a little breeze blowing now, which is, I think, going to help the bite. But I'm just going to hit these little high per percentage spots. Last little grass point try right here. It's got the wind. Well, this is one of the, on our off limits, this is like the furthest point up we can fish that sticks out a little bit. So with as much current as they've been pulling, they're reducing it, but this still has a little current on it, which should be the key to getting a bite if you're going to catch them in the grass. I don't like the grass fish like that cranking and stuff when it's dead calm. So we've got a little wind. We're trying it before we go back and start jerk bait. 
I'm throwing a big swim bait out here right now, just checking them. Just checking them, nothing fancy. Just see if there's any old big hogs wanting a mellow mushroom this morning. We finna go to jerking though. I ain't no need to play it around. I ain't caught one like this, even though I've had a few bites. Know that big rascal's there. Let's stop dragging around and go. Yeah, we're moving. We gotta go catch fish. We gotta go catch fish. Got enough wind blowing down them rocks now. Gerald's looking. He looks like he's running down. I don't know where he's going, but he definitely didn't like what he saw. There's fish around here. You know, they somewhere. I'm just going to hit these high percentage little points and stuff. I mean, Try to find just a bite, really, right now. Feel like I'm going to get bit. May need to move a little shallower. I've been fishing a little bit deeper. You know, hadn't really. But the water I mean, temp's just perfect for, you know, five, six foot zone. Just gonna keep fishing, just keep chunking. Keep chunking and looking. Throwing a big rattle bait, I mean, three quarter ounce. Current's been running a lot lately, so I'm, you know, I would think these fish would be. At times, yes, at times you can. I mean, nobody, especially, I mean, you'll, at times you definitely can. If you find a really good spot, 
you know, you'll definitely get, catch a couple out of them. Most of the time it's, you go, you go, you go, and you finally get bit, and then you kind of slow down and really fish it, and you'll get a couple more bites. Sometimes you'll find them, I mean, when you stay offshore, you know, you're looking, you're definitely looking for groups, groups of fish, you know, places you can get. That one I caught was up near the bank, and it was a good one, but, I mean, a decent one, but it was, you know, you're not going to find a school of fish right there. These staging spots. That's where you're going to find, you know, three or four of them. All right, we're back on this little stretch of rocks. I'm gonna stick with rocks. I got a few bites on it. If it's gonna be this, this deal is gonna be this tough. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to the way I can catch a few and try to, try to make Joe perform. So, and he can, he can, but I'm gonna go the way I think I can catch one. Back to jerking. I had several not get it here this morning. A couple of them flash at.
keep fanning it out wide because I know old big dog sitting out there. But it's like we're missing the wind. See how it's slick right here? I'm not paying attention because the wind's blowing that way. It's the best set of rocks should be back there. I'm just going to have to go with my gut and go with it. Fishing kind of stubborn. If you're going to catch one right here, it's going to be on this natural color bait. I'm finna pick it up, try it, and then we're going to move. It's gotten so calm. Something like that right there ought to catch him. That one is this calm, you almost got to hide the bait from him. Yeah, we made, we kind of just played around this eel grass out here where I think the fish should be. I, I went into the, you know, a pocket and, uh, you know, still may go back in there, but I have not got bit out here, out in front, out in some of this main lake stuff, which we're not in the current, but we're close. I just wanted to try a few of these little points. Neither one of us had got bit. You know, we don't have a whole lot of time to fish, so I, I wanted to spend my time really fishing and not running. But I still gotta, you know, get around a productive area. Little one. He may go a pound though. No, he's not going to. Oh, I don't know. Well, that's a late Gunnersville. I mean, a good. I mean, you could put him. You could put him on a uh, on a hook and drift him around out here. It may not be good. Scale zero. I'm guessing he is going to go point. He's going to be nine point ninety something. Oh no! Calm down. Calm down, you one pounder. One point one two. Yes! Yes! Thank you! That's the biggest one I've ever caught out here. Hey, every one of them counts. I didn't think he was going to go. That's not what I'm looking for, though. That is not what I'm looking for. I'll glad to take them, but He just fouled me up. Just lost one. They'll do that when they slap at your rattle bait. They'll foul it up. Look at that scale. It probably is not a bass, but look at that scale right there. And just hooked. I don't know if it was a bass. That was a. I don't know. It looks like a bass scale. I has a good one. Not one eight.
about foul hooking me, just slapped at it. I know that was a bass. I could just slapping, man. I'm going to go to shower running silent crankbait right through here. Something that'll sneak up on them. I know that was a bath. Little, little. See how he got that bait? First cast. Yep, 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 you dummy. You dummy. You should have. Zero. One point seven four. One seventy four. First cast. I mean, that's why you. I probably should have changed baits on a few of these spots where I've gotten bit, but they're just they're nipping, nipping to that trap. Went to a silent crankbait. First one chokes it. Real slick conditions right now. Rattle bait's too much for him. Bet you I'm just fishing. I was just fishing right by him with that rattle trap. I may let that one spot rest back there in the yacht club and go hit it with a crankbait. That's what I should have done before. I don't want that rattle bait today. No wind. Probably don't want a shatter bait either. Probably got a finesse. Oh, 
missed him right there at the boat. Right back out. There's another bite. Reeling it up. Well, I'm, I'm moving around a little bit more right now. I'm just jumping from point to point, a little channel swing and rip wrap. I'm still jerking, I'm trying to get a couple of key bites. Jordan's caught two more little ones. So I got to figure out how to get me a couple of bites. I went back to my good rip wrap. And Diesel Dorf and Diesel Dean running right there. They was in there, so. You know, diesel and diesel, diesel dog, diesel dean. Nope, it's not big of it. I had a few bites out here. Zero. One, eight, four. You know, I I could be all excited and jumping up and down, but I'm 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 not excited catching 184s on Gunnerful. I'm just not. I don't feel like I'm doing much. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm figuring out a bait. And I've gotten, you know, some bites right here. Just had, you know, they're eating the, eating the bait at least. I feel like I've been fishing right over them with the rattle bait. I am fishing outside stuff, but that one fish that I, I hung, I mean, it, that I got at scale, I mean, that was, I know that was bass. I know it was one of them great biggins. Slapped at it. There's a good one. No, he's not a big hit. Oh, he's a better one, though. Yeah, he's a better one. Stay on. Ah, that's more like it. That's more like it right there, boys. That's more like it. Yeah, they're, they're out here. 
Sorry. Scale zero. Yep, there. There's some fish right out here, boys. That's a four pounder. All four. day. Four point zero eight. That's more like it right there. Good, good chunk. I mean, look how short, stocky though, man. It's gunnerful. Love it, man. Love it. Getting some bites right here. Getting some bites. He thumped it too. Oh. Little bait adjustment. You know, I, I've been getting some bites on a rattle bait, and uh, hooking that one scale. I mean, I I could feel him bite it, and he just just hitting it with a closed mouth or something. So. I, you know, I swapped to a silent crankbait. A little bit more finesse. You see out here, it's glass calm. A lot of times those fish will just shy away from a, a rattlebait. You know, when you have these conditions. So I'm, I'm going to, you know, a silent bait. Something I can kind of just sneak up. Sneak up on them. And they're sitting down there in that eelgrass. I mean, that's what you do out here. You either you're either trapping them. I'm just going. I'm just pulling this bait over this grass. You see, I'm just, I'm just getting hung up, and I'm just pulling it. You don't have to really wind it. You just kind of pull it. That's what works. on a shad pattern too. Sunny days like this. It's a bass, it's a 10, but it's a drum. Moved down the stretch just a little bit. I was getting quite a few bites behind us. I just moved just a little bit. There's a point right here off this island. I hadn't got bit off the point. It was kind of down the. I can see I'm just now getting in a little bit of current too.
nothing on the point. One more cast up there. So we don't catch one. What? Never. Oh, I don't even know what it, how much lead I have. <laughs> no, there's not a lead that's safe. And to be honest with you, I just want to. I just want to catch some good ones. I don't get the fish out here enough. I feel like this this little spot right here's got some fish on it. Guarantee it. You can catch two fives, easy. Easiest lake to do it on. Else, why don't come get him some? He's gonna, he's gonna find them. I know he will. I was running back here in the grass, man. There's no time to adjust. I'm out just about out of time. So I got about 35 minutes, and Jordan's then caught a couple of keepers and then caught a big one. So I put some pretty big deficit to try to overcome. So 
go right back to the grass just see if you can't get lucky and catch two tens. Just not not a lot of wind. So I'm about to make a little adjustment here. They're biting something. We just have to figure out what. Maybe this and dull down a little bit. What do you want? One problem is I can't cast this little plug. I bought it though. Giants. They will thump slack in this little thing. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I guarantee you. Yeah. That was a big bass. I guarantee it. Yeah, I do too. There's one right there, I missed him. Probably a smaller one. You don't ever know. They're 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 hitting really weird today. I think the no wind. Something. There's I'm just fishing around this island. There's eel grass all around it. This makes kind of a little turn right where my boat's at. But it's just like carpets of eel grass. And this little crankbait, I'm trying to run it right over the top of it. There he was again. Slack me. I'm trying to run right over the top of it. You don't want them buried down. You know, you gotta have the right. Look at that scale. Look at this. These are these are bass. Look at that. I'm hitting them or they're swapping at it. It's ridiculous, man. I don't get it. I told you I I, mean, I can tell when I'm getting a bite. It's ridiculous. I really do not want to eat right now. That's a, I mean, that's a... That's ridiculous.
and you'll get some fish that just absolutely just choke it. And you're thinking, man, I got the right bait on. They're really not wanting to eat right now. They're in that zone right before. These slick sunny days like this, it can be They just do not. Definitely don't want to bite that rattle bait though. I can just count that out. Maybe this morning right at daylight. Low light. He got me right in the hand. Gotta love it. Little pecker. Just ripped these brand new Teenage Marine gloves up. Oh my gosh. I don't even want to weigh this. I'm embarrassed. I'm literally embarrassed to put this on the scale. I know that's not what's hitting me. One point zero two. You know, I honestly thought about throwing this fish back because I was embarrassed to even put him on the scale. I mean, that's just it's embarrassing. But you saw the scale I caught. That wasn't a one point oh two scale. I guarantee you. Marking in a little shallower on this. Make sure none of these big ones are up here shallow.
Still nothing. Still nothing. Should have just probably stayed out in the grass and just dawdled around with something, but it didn't. Oh well. Working this inside line, I'm gonna move again. And the other day, they're choking the DT6 back of the throat today. Can't get a bite on it. And guess what? I ain't freaking changing. Should have been somewhere. A red bait up. Water's got a little color right there, but that's about it. Let's see what it is there. Yeah, we're still in the same little area. You know, Gerald was fishing around here earlier too. We were just right here just trying to find them. But there's no lead ever safe on this lake. And I'm not content with what I found either. I have not found the right ones yet. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to. But I definitely figure out. I definitely think I figured out a bait I can get bit on, you know, cranking. Little. Nope. I lied. He's running right at me. I'll show how we did that on Gville right there. He just boat flip them in. He was running right at me. That's another four pounder. Zero. Mm-hmm. He's running right at me. Four. Thirty eight, four three eight. Good, nice You just got to boat flip them. They're coming on in. Oh, 
in this little eel grass, we, you know, the difference is we got a little bit of flow out here. We got a little current, not hard current. I'm thinking that switching baits. Just jerking around over some of this deeper grass, just hoping for a miracle. That's all I can do. I don't really have nowhere around here I'd ever fish in my life, so I'm just going to throw it some grass and hope for a miracle. I'm trying to jerk bait over it. I've tried everything else. I ain't going to sit out here and throw a trap. That just ain't going to happen. I don't care if he catches a hundred. I'm going to keep doing what I do. It's a little bit of deep eel grass leading into this, but... Cover. Here. Water the old swim bait around, so.
Hmm. Nice little one. He ran right at me. right at me another one pounder just a little buck where there are bucks zero there are there are big ones though one 122 you know that's a good sign for this lake I mean it really is this to catch one pounders you're not just catching threes and fours and those fish right there going to grow up to be biggins. There's a lot of good years. Still grass is about sitting in ten foot. Comes up off the bottom about four foot. I'm throwing a six foot diving crankbait. Right where I caught the other one, that four pounder. It's gonna work down this outside little bar right here, this little ridge. Let's see if it can't run into a school of them.
Okay. Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, you know, anything can happen, but feeling good. It's fun catching fish. I think I may start out actually where I, I mean, I may finish where I started except with a different bait and see if I can get, you know, see if it was the bait. This is kind of a straight little bar right here and I'm not thinking that there's going to be a anything to hold these fish right here, or a lot of them anyways. Probably go to that little point. Probably make a lot one more cast. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start back right out here and just see if I just fish right beside, right over these fish. If there's anything out over here. This is the biggest life jacket in the history of life jackets. I'll tell you that. I feel like a big old marshmallow. Yep, that's where we're going to finish out. deep water right on this point. I figured not. It's alright. I'm not going to I'm not going to rub it in. Could easily have been me. I know people want to see trash talking and stuff like that, but you can't always find them. Why wouldn't you cast the log, Jordan? Why would you not? Sticking out here, just looking at you. It's been there for years. I think I've actually caught a fish off of it too. I can't remember when, but I think I have caught one off this log. I don't remember what time of year it was.
You can have them quick on this lake. I do know that. I'm really surprised I caught one on this little point. I think I did get bit off of it this morning. I just missed them. On me. Not much going on here in boat 21. DT texting the last cup of eelgrass I've seen out here. Had the potential to have a bite in. It's got a little wind on it. I'm going to throw at it. I mean, if I caught two tens back to back. Come on, fish. No daggum good way y'all sitting there on the tip of that thing. All of y'all. Come It's got a lot of similarities you need to have to catch them on it, but <laughs> taking the eel grass good. Right there's where it should have been when you hit that bright green clump right there, he should have choked it. He's don't bite it right there. Plus he just ain't there. Man. Not a bite. Not even a nibble. Crickets. You can see where I rip it that grass out there to float up. I think the reason I was getting bit over here is a little bit thicker grass. It's 
seemed like down there. Down that way, it just kind of was real short. And I've called them right here on a frog before. I haven't really fished a whole lot in the spring, but I tell you, frogging has been exceptional right here in the past. So it's just like there's no hydrilla out here anymore. It's just all, all eelgrass. And after the, after we're done, I'm probably gonna come back out here. Not right here, but I'm gonna come find. I'm gonna try to find them somewhere. They're just teasing me right now. Just teasing. back in well that's the conclusion of that ass whooping that's what that is i didn't catch nothing man caught a few on that first jerking hole when it slicked off i ain't caught nothing else oh well it is what it is that's a beat down that's a beat down
and you catch one of your own chatterbait. Freezing last night, no wind, but Joe still caught enough to win, but it ain't they ain't been chewing the bark off of it. Not even a chatter bait bite. That gummit, that gummit, that gummit. Hey, gummit, that gummit, that gummit. Felt just a little fishy. Well, you're not undefeated anymore, Diamond Dave. You've been walloped. Thank God. Ain't much to talk about for me. You don't have to get more stuff from Joe. He called him, I didn't. I just didn't get no bite, slicked off. Run around for a second, trying to make something happen. He started pulling away from me to come back to the grass, game over. I mean, just didn't, it's not conducive weather for what's going on for me, but hey. Sometimes you don't get it, man. I catch most of mine up here on a DT6 and Stuff like that in the eelgrass, but we got a little too slick. Had a couple of swipe at it. Even had some hit my jerk bait like that. I thought if I started on them rocks, caught a few spots early. I caught some thick ones down through there the other day, but didn't get enough bites to win. Joe got it done. Go to the house. Joe's the winner. He don't have to get one rod, he can have them all. Let's go to Chicken Bucket Duckets. You know, chicken bucket, chicken bucket duck it. You know, the best part about beat and swindle today is I get to have one of his rod and reels right near my mantle. I can already see it. Right, the, the classic trophies, you know, I got an MLF trophy down there, and I'm going to have the swindle's rod and reel laid across with a brand new bait. I mean, there's not many people who say you have his rod, but a fun day on Gunnersville, you know, got to got to catch some fish, um, you know, kind of figured them out a little bit late, catch them on a crankbait, you know, the, the conditions really were, you know, I think the reason they weren't biting that trap good, but uh, I'm using 6.6 um, six to 1 Revo uh, ALF, you know, throws crankbaits, small crankbaits really good, throwing on my J. Lee rods that's going to be out this summer which I'm excited about. And uh, I threw another little small crankbait, a four foot diver, a six foot diver and a four foot diver. Uh, 12 pound, 100% fluorocarbon on both of them. And uh, you know, I had fun, I had fun today. I, th I think Swindle's probably gonna be a little mad at me, maybe for, you know, a few days, but he'll get over it. So, uh, enjoyed it guys. Hopefully, uh, hopefully y'all did too.
It's over. Is this 21 it's pounds? Done. Is that what you have? I don't he even know. Tell you 21. He didn't tell me. He didn't even tell me. <laughs> it's we over. Caught, yeah, we caught. I caught some fish today, but uh, it, was, it was, you know, I didn't. It's all right though. <laughs> you know, instead of taking one of Gerald's nice, you know, rod and reel combos he got down here, I'm so hungry when I came in. <laughs> he wants my last quarter. I want, of a, I want a quarter of a sandwich. <laughs> hey, has she and bought that one turkey? Of Lulu's no. Notes. Yeah, be prepared to hit your pitch. Your pitch is. Did you hit? Yeah, I think you hit my pitches. Well, the last pitch of the day is going to be the, this and this sandwich, and this is probably going to be the best. That is of the, day. the big turkey sandwich. That's not that store bought process. That's this big. Going, this tastes Lulu sandwich, the this, winning victory dance. I mean, some going, people get the crown jewel. That's 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 on point, ain't it? That's water. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. It's I getting fall, tomorrow. I'm fried. That's it, bass. On. We're done. I got folded up like that sandwich. Joe Lee is still the champ on Gunnersville. And Lulu makes the best sandwich in nine states. Guaranteed. That's what I learned today. <laughs> that was a good sandwich. That sound gun is good. She come on the night. She said, I bought this turkey. It's $15. I'm good like, it's Lord. I can set the camera down.